We have some new pricing info for the 2024 brand new Mustang. So we're going to have a look at some of the, the pricing and the and the trim levels here. And then I'm going to redesign the front end because I did a redesign of the rear, but I didn't really think about the front end too much because I think it looks really, really good. I actually made a redesign of the uh, S550 Mustang kind of uh, trying to imagining what the S650 could look like. And the real thing looks so much better than my redesign. So I'm really happy with how they actually mus American muscleinized the front end of the Mustang. So here are the, uh, the the different trims and the pricing for it. So it starts at thirty thousand nine hundred and twenty dollars, and that is for the EcoBoost uh, Fastback with three hundred and fifteen horsepower. Not bad at all. You get the uh, Pilot three hundred and sixty technology. But the thing with this base is that the interior. I don't know what happened with the interior of the of the base. I mean, the 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 other ones still have the big curved screen. But the base just completely looks off in the interior with two screens where you can see that it's been designed for the curved screen. But instead, for some reason, they decided to uh, give the, the very base model these two separate screens where the part in between have this shelf. It, it just looks very weird. And then you have the EcoBoost Premium, which gives you the proper curved glass display with a 13.2 inch uh, stack and the 12.4 inch in instrument cluster and you know i would definitely pay <laughs> six and a half grand so i just don't have to just so i don't have to look at the dual screen setup that we have in the base and then we go into the ecoboost premium convertible which is forty two thousand dollars but the one i would pick we have the gt premium we have the gt fastback right here 480 horsepower V8, you can get it with a manual transmission, absolutely fantastic. And this makes me think, it's so sad that Dodge is uh, canceling the the Challenger, because I think that is the ultimate muscle car, and they still produce it in manual transmissions, and now they're uh, doing these final versions of the Challenger. And then Mustang comes out with a 2024 model that is a V8 and a manual, which means that Dodge, they could have extended their Dodge line, the Challenger lineup with the V8 engine and the manual transmission for probably another decade or so if they really wanted to. But the one I would pick is the GT Premium Fastback because you get the Brembo brakes, you get a different interior, you get the ambient lighting, which I don't really care about. But you also get a an, another exhaust here, which is really cool. And you have a Bang & Olufsen 12 speaker uh, sound system as an option. So I would get the GT Premium. I think the, what, what is the difference here? $42,000 for the GT and then the Premium jumps up to forty six. So about four or five grand more and you get the Premium package, which I think is worth it. And then of course you have the Dark Horse which we're gonna have a look at here as well. When I saw the Dark Horse, when I saw the Mustang, the first the the first video of the rele release of this new Mustang, I thought the rear end looked weak, and I kind of still do because I did uh, talk about that in a different video, and I did make a redesign of the rear, kind of adding some structure and muscle to the rear, like we have in the front. But then the Dark Horse looks <laughs> so cool, even with the you know with the rear end that they now have on the on the Mustang. It just, it, it looks menacing, specifically in this dark color. And you have 500 horsepower and a six-speed manual with rev match and also mag magna ride damping system. So let's jump into Photoshop here and let's have a look at this new Mustang. And then I'm going to redesign the front end at the very end of this video. So here we have, I've talked about these sketches before, but I think it's worth going over again because I love sketches like this when you can see the designer's thoughts visually and how it turned out to be whatever it is so here we have some inspiration from uh, animals which is uh, pretty common when it comes to car design because animals have this dynamic uh, movement naturally built into the shape of, of of their bodies so you can see how this translated into this very early sketch uh, which looks uh, maybe a little too sport car or almost supercar with this Koenigsegg visor design that we have here I'm glad they didn't pick this I'm glad they didn't go 
with the with the sports car approach to this design instead they added more muscle into the design and here's another side view gorgeous side view love these simple gray tone uh, sketches that we have in the early uh, design process all of these when we look at all of these i think all of these look way way too sporty for a mustang if you want to create a sports car if Ford wanted to create, create a sports car, that's totally fine. You can use designs like this. But if you want to create a Mustang, come on, it's a muscle car. We need to have more structure, more horizontal vertical lines in, in the designs. And these look, they look great, but they're just way too sporty. So here we see how this then morphed, morphed into what it became uh, of the Mustang. And you can look at the front end. We're going to have a look at the real thing in a minute. But I love this line here. This is a big change from the S550 because now we have a one single horizontal line which emphasizes the width of the front end and everything happens underneath this, this front. You can see it more clearly here, this line here, beautifully done. Love the new graphics of the headlights as well and the grille. There are a couple of things here that I'm going to change in the redesign which we're going to talk about in, in a bit. But looking at the rear end, it looks pretty cool in this sketch here. And one thing, one detail I, I love about the rear is just how deep this cut goes into the into the deck lid it's it's uh, very pronounced a lot more than we've seen before and then you have this uh, clear uh, three three taillights that's been around for mustangs for a very long time since the beginning basically following this uh, th this uh, surfacing inside of the deck lid i think it's a really cool design however as i did in the redesign i would like to change a couple of things just for example extending these i showed you this before how the redesign turned out to be and also moving this part moving it out pushing it out a little bit so we have more of a not not so much of an angle in the in the diffuser part and have it more uh muscle car -y essentially so let's have a look at the front end and compare the old to the new up here what happened i think they went too sporty with the previous generation specifically this facelift if i were to pick between the facelift version uh, that came out in i think 20 uh I think it was 2018 when they came out with this facelift of the S550. I would prefer to have the pre-facelift specifically when you look at the rear end. I, I just think it looks more muscle car-y. This looks great, but it still looks too much like a sports car. So that's why I'm really glad that they didn't go the way I redesigned the S550 to be the S650. I made a more of a sporty uh, solution for the front end, uh, which I thought Ford was going to go more in that direction. But they surprised me and they went back to the muscle car approach. I absolutely love this front end. I think it's gorgeous. However, as I said, there is always a couple of things that, that, that we can change and maybe experiment with. And we're going to do that a, little, um, uh, a bit later in the redesign. And let's come back to the front end. And uh, right before the redesign, I'm going to let you know exactly what I want to change. So here we have the side view. What I'm missing here is you can see that we have we don't have it here, but we did have it in the 2010 to 2014 Mustang is the hockey stick uh, line at the bottom. I think it's an easy thing to implement right here and they could have just done it something like this. I think that would have brought back uh, some more identity in the side view. This reminds me a lot of a Camaro. So having lines like this, for example, uh, the original 1960s Mustang line at the side view, I think it would help to uh, differentiate the side view a little bit more. But here you can see we have very sharp lines in the body. And we one thing I love about the shoulder line is that it goes in direct uh, connection to the front headlights. It's, a, it's just a beautiful looking car, the new Mustang. It has a good uh, combination of sportiness, but it definitely added a lot more muscle, American muscle car feel in the new S650. Looking at the rear end, so this is the facelifted uh, version up here. As you can see, 2018, when we changed the they added some angles to the upper part and the lower part of the taillights same thing here i would definitely prefer the pre-facelift that just has straight lines the simpler design you have the better when it comes to muscle cars if you start to add too much styling it kind of becomes more of a sports car and i think that's what happened with this facelift now you can see the 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 new mustang here what I think could change is uh, having these taillights, as I said, stick out a little further and connecting with this line, with the cut line, having a cut line go straight instead of going up here. 
and then also pushing this um, diffuser and the rear the lower part of the rear end now goes like this I want to just push it out a little bit to m have it in a side view look uh, more uh, vertical than what we have right here just by a couple of inches and that I, I think it made a big change now the big thing is is the interiors here so up here we have the s650 interior it looks pretty clean what I love about this interior is that it takes a lot of inspiration from the 1960s the early Mustangs specifically with this uh, double wave design that we have in the dash and this is something that they even implemented in the Ford Mustang Mach-E the electric SUV but they didn't implement that in the new proper Mustang as you can see this dash is completely flat there's nothing going on and no connection to the to the history of Mustang which I think is um, uh, you know a missed opportunity because we could just implement that even though it sits behind the screen because it does that on the Mustang Mach-E as well it would just uh, bring some more Mustang into this interior and when you look at this screen so as you know I'm not a huge fan of big screens like this but I have to say this looks rather well integrated because it follows for example down here you can see that it, it curves and it follows the the surfacing of the, the the panels that it's sitting on and I think that's a cool idea and then you can also of course have the retro Fox body instrument panel if you want to of course digitalized in the screens and I think that's the biggest benefit of having screens is the customizations you can do but I still I don't know I still prefer this type of layout because it just looks more unique and it feels a lot more Mustang even though this is still digital as you know the facelift that they turn everything into digital uh, gauge clusters but they still have a proper identity in the interior now looking at the base model this is you know definitely worth uh, f f what 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 did we say four or five grand to upgrade from this to having at least a, a display that was designed for sort of designed to fit this interior right here in the base echo boost you can see that these definitely look like just two literal iPads stuck on the dash with absolutely zero connection to to anything um, uh, around it and I think it's it's a weird approach by Ford to do this I don't know if this is any cheaper to have a completely different interior in the base model than you have in the in the premium echo boost up here this just feels like it's a weird um, decision to just separate that one single model by having this uh, these two separated displays like this and it definitely does not look as good as it does in the in the uh, premium uh, mustangs new mustangs with the one single curved display so going back to the front end what I want to do here in the redesign is you see this black piece here I don't think it looks I don't think it has any any sort of function to have this be black so what I'm gonna do is just raise this chamfer here raise it up to this point so we have the chamfer going right underneath where the where the actual um, grill stops and another detail I want to change is the the end point right here of this headlight I want to have this instead of going in this angle I'm gonna make it go in this angle and I think that's gonna add some more muscle carness and uh, more Mustang feel to this design having it be uh, sort of a, a flashback to the uh, both the 2005 Mustang which I think was the best iteration of a modernized version of the 1960s Mustang but also bring it back to the 1960s Mustang and have it have this almost psychotic look that we have uh, and it hasn't it hasn't been implemented in any Mustang since the 60s but having those eyeballs sitting deep in the eye sockets and also having this line being this way instead of being more sporty like we have here and another detail I want to change are these wings here so you see how they go in in an angle like this and they kind of connect to this piece here but what I want to do is just create an angle that goes like this so we have the wing going here and then almost vertical have this wing be vertical 
and uh, more uh, architectural and more muscle car-y. And I think that will add to the, it, it will reduce the sporty feel of the front end and add some more muscle car feel as well, while still retaining the uh, Mustang identity in the front end. So with that said, now we're gonna run, jump into the redesign and actually do the changes that I talked about. And if you wanna stick around for that, you're welcome to do so. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.